Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Both ESCOM and SASL took interesting electricity generation decisions this week that break with their respective coal heritages. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. ESCOM has launched a process to procure a large-scale energy battery storage system. Yes, that's correct. They've launched a tender for a large-scale battery energy storage system in Ferendal in the Western Cape that's next to the Sierra Wind Farm. And the background to this is that when uh, Eskom received a World Bank loan in 2010, there was a renewable energy component to that loan. And uh, the, there was the Sierra Wind Farm, which has been built, the 100 megawatt Sierra Wind Farm. And then there was supposed to be a concentrated solar power plant. That project since was abandoned uh, for being not cost competitive. And uh, World Bank has agreed that Eskom can instead install a large scale battery energy storage system across multiple sites. And the first tender is now out uh, for this 80 megawatt uh, facility that can produce energy of 320 megawatt hours. And uh, Eskom having the finance, not only from the World Bank, but they've also received, received finance from the African Development Bank and the New Development Bank of the BRICS Group, uh, is able to proceed with this and is hoping to place the contract before the end of the year. So this is a, a major new development for Eskom and for South Africa. Then Sasol pulled the trigger on its renewables rollout. Yes, South Africa's other big carbon emitter is Sasol, the, uh, the, the producer of chemicals and fuels from coal. And it has a plan to reduce its carbon footprint by 10% by 2030. And part of that plan is to introduce renewable energy into its electricity supply system. Uh, so it put out a request for information in May and received an overwhelming response of over 100 RPPs came back with projects representing about 7,000 megawatts. And uh, Sasol has since now initiated a, a tender or put out a tender for two small embedded power, solar power generated plants, one at Sasselberg and one in Secunda, uh, 10 megawatts each, um, and uh, this is quite a big development again for a company that has a, a deep coal heritage and is now made clear that on the electricity front, it does have so, uh, already have some coal, own coal and gas fired uh, generation in its network, but it's now going to increasingly install uh, renewable energy in the form of solar and wind. There is more to come from both companies. Yes, from a Sassel perspective, they want to install 600 megawatts. So you can see these two 10 megawatt uh, embedded plants are still very small in its life. Uh, the reason why it's gone, gone ahead with these two small plants is it's looked at the, the cumbersome regulatory environment in South Africa. And uh, it feels that NERSA, they can approach NERSA for a license for these two plants of no more than 10 megawatts. Once you breach that threshold, there's a feeling then you have to also get a carve out in the RP from the, the Minister of Energy. So instead of doing that, uh, they are going to move ahead with these two small plants, then prepare their roadmap, and then approach the Minister of Energy for the full 600 megawatts and, exp uh, and request uh, other deviation notice from the integrated resource plan or to uh, or to uh, be allocated as part of the integrated resource plan. There is a column in the integrated resource plan of 2019 for 500 megawatts a year of, of distributed power. So there is a potential there. So Cecil will be putting out tenders for much larger projects. And it's wanting to have uh, wind and solar of up to 200 megawatts by 2025, and then obviously climb to the 600 megawatts. On the Eskom front, this is just the start of the battery energy storage rollout. And uh, they've, they've already identified several other sites. The projects will be uh, mostly smaller than the one that is going to be installed in Ferendal. But this is just the first phase for Eskom, and they do have funding for it. So uh, there's going to be definitely more tenders coming out from Eskom as well for battery energy storage in the months ahead. And so in both, for both these companies with huge coal heritages, we can see a, that the energy transition is having an impact on them. 
both from an environmental perspective, this imperative for SASL to lower its carbon footprint, but they say this is going to be lowered very cost effectively given that there's been these plummeting costs of both solar PV and wind. And then for Eskin, as, the, as we have more variable renewable energy coming into the system, we're going to be needing a, a, a network supported or complemented with flexible generation. One of these flexible generations will be battery energy storage, and that will be for the sort of intraday uh, variations. But we're going to need other uh, storage or flexibility systems to deal with seasonality, uh, to deal with uh, the, the, the different times of the day that, uh, where the wind might not be blowing and the sun not shining. So we'll probably see, we will definitely see a gas to power program coming in in the months ahead. And then obviously we've got the, the pump storage schemes which offer storage and flexibility. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.